What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 7 of the single overhead cam EJ257 hybrid build. This uh, episode I'm going to get the cylinder heads torqued on. Uh, if you watched the last episode I ended up taking apart the heads, porting them out, getting all the valves back in, new valve seals, and uh, I've got both heads finished. And before they can actually be torqued onto the block, they need a little bit of modification. So these are EJ251 single overhead cam heads and I'll be using STI gaskets. Um, so these are Felpro Primatorque MLS just OEM replacement gaskets that I can get at a really good price. And when I lay the gasket onto the head and the gaskets matched for an STI head or, or, or the block and when I kind of line up the where the head bolts will come through I can see this little water jacket here should actually be filed open a little bit you can see it's not all three layers of gasket it's just one one layer of the gasket the same over on this side and I've also noticed the STI gaskets have this hole plugged but the 251 gaskets actually have this hole opened so I favor to open it so I'm gonna pass a drill bit through this one similar size to that hole open up these two ends with the file I gotta do both gaskets and then at that point the head cylinder heads should be ready to torque on I just gotta clean it and give everything a wipe down with some brake clean and yeah so I'm gonna get started on that and I've also got uh, I've got the valve covers reasonably cleaned up and I've given them a spray I've got to do another coat on them they should be ready by the time I want to finish up torquing the heads on and then by the end of the episode I'd, I'd like to have the heads fully torqued on and the timing all finished as well you'll notice through my videos whenever whenever I'm using playing with head gaskets cylinder heads the ceiling surface I always use cardboard and there's a number of reasons I use it. It's uh, very pliable. It'll it'll take damage before most metallic things will. And when you get it fresh out of a package, it's relatively clean. It might have you know a little bit of linty kind of material to it, but there's nothing sharp unless you got staples or something. But I like to keep stuff like this well protected when I'm working with it. Uh, doesn't matter you know if it's just a cheap head gasket replacement on on, on, a, on a cheap car or something performance I'm not situated in, in in a place where everything can be kept so clean and well protected so I take as much precaution as I can when I'm doing it I also work with relatively clean hands you don't want a lot of oil or anything on your hands when you're working with gaskets so I've got a drill pit that's uh, basically the same size hole as that one there and I'm just gonna come down through the center here hopefully the bit doesn't walk around on me but if I just start a little slow should just go right through now I'll just take a I'll just take this punch and just gently uh, massage the drilled hole flat something like that and now I'm ready to uh, set up to file out these a little bit I just gotta be sure I'll probably take the marker and just mark them a little bit to see where exactly where I want to file them out see how this looks so even though I didn't take off as much material 
as I marked this hole is is really close and I think I'm gonna leave it right there same with this one and we just have that one opened up in the top to give the head a little extra cooling around the combustion chambers so yeah I think that's gonna work perfect there's my hybrid gasket ready to go So as you can see, I got the other cylinder head on. Both uh, valve covers are on. And uh, took the extra time just to clean up the hardware. And uh, it's looking really good. So I'm ready to go on to the timing next. So I'm just going to put on all the idler idlers. And the, I've got a new belt to install. Once everything's lined up, then I do want to turn this thing over a few times just to make sure everything's going to be good. So to start with, we'll put on this little tiny rear timing cover piece. There's just two 10 mil bolts that hold it on here. And then I'll move right onto the idler. So I'm just going to be reusing the the GMB idlers that I have. They're really quiet, still really good shape. Leave the leave this last one off till the end, and I'll be reusing the tensioner. I've already got it all loaded up and ready to install. And I did end up buying a new Deco timing belt. Uh, I don't often replace belts because they last so long, but I figured I wanted this. Uh, 
build to have a few more parts than what I usually put. Sometimes you come to the end here and you get into a really tight spot getting onto this cogged sprocket. So just try putting the edge of the belt onto that cogged sprocket. Okay, so this is slowly turning into one of those belts that you just can't get on. Which I'm kind of in disbelief because even though it's it's a Deco belt, it's not the Deco belt I thought I was going to be getting. I thought I was going to get the one with that really nice coating on it, but uh, this belt is so tight that I can't seem to get it started. I can't believe I've actually taken this idler back off. That's actually how tight it is. And if I pull down really hard I can see I can probably get these threads to line up. Now that it's on there it feels really good. All the marks are still lined up with the belt. So I think I can install this last pulley underneath here. So now with all the timing set in place I do actually want to turn this thing over a couple times. So I'm going to stick on the lightweight pulley. And we'll turn it over and see how it feels. Sounds really good. I can actually hear the exhaust ports shooting air out from each cylinder. All the timing marks are right in line. Timing has been set. And basically to finish up this video, I'm just going to put on the time covers. I'm going to clean them up, clean up the hardware, mount them on, and uh, we'll call it quits. So I've got the timing covers all cleaned up and uh, all the mounting hardware cleaned up as well. Just get ready to close the whole front of it up. Put the side cover on. So there it is, uh, all assembled and all cleaned up and uh, looking really pretty. At least having it this way, if it outlasts the car, which it probably will, uh, and it makes its way into another Subaru, it'll still be relatively easy to clean up then, or still look really good and just be able to drop it into another car. I really think the heads are going to work awesome with the block, uh, especially with that extra porting. And I, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to start out start out at 5 psi, but I actually ordered an 8 psi actuator to put on as soon as I know the engine's working good and not making any noise. Then I'll probably uh, put it up to 8 psi and try it there. I'm not so sure if I'll be able to get enough fuel into the engine to go past 8. So uh, I might have to stop there and just see what it feels like. But with this guy sitting the way that it is, really I've just got uh, the intake manifold to clean up and the up pipe to think about constructing. Um, so really when the intake's done, bolt it on, I'll probably be getting ready to sit this guy back into the car, which is good because I, uh, I really want to drive it and I really want to hear it. Especially with the exhaust that I did back at you know around Christmas time or at the end of the year there so if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already leave your questions and comments further down below and I'll see you in the next one